Phyllis, I'm glad you made it today so we can... You know, this conference will now be recorded. Okay, we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everyone to the February 6th American County Commission meeting. We have four commissioners in attendance and Commissioner Becker recovering online. We'll begin with the public forum. Any public comments? If you're online, unmute your microphone. Okay, I see no public comments. Uh, we'll move into agenda approval. We will be adding some executive sessions. Uh, the ones I know of are potential property acquisition and personnel. Any other changes to the agenda? If not, it'll stand approved. We'll move into administrative items. Okay, we do have some change orders. January 31st. Okay, commission's had a chance to review the minutes. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Garing. Is there a second? No second. Second by Commissioner Crowfoot. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries 5-0. just wanted to make you aware that we had to avoid a check and reissue it for payday so that the January 31st totals did not change but the check numbers changed we voided check 47317 and added 47330 so that's just informational okay. if you can sign in yeah. and then I do have uh, early checks today in your pocket, and the board is there. And the total amount is eighteen thousand seven hundred five thirty-six. Okay. Motion to approve. We have a motion from Commissioner Gearing to approve. Is there a second? Yes, second. Second by Commissioner Dolphy. Were there any questions on those checks? 
If not, is there uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carried 5-0. In your packet, you have the engagement letter for the Lloyd Group for the budget and the financial services. I believe you had already approved their services. Okay. You just need to accept the uh, and sign the engagement letter. Okay, is there a motion to accept and sign the engagement letter for Lloyd Group? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Gehring. Is there a second? Uh, second to Second by Commissioner Crowfoot. Any questions or discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carried, tie vote. Just for people in the audience, we have one commissioner online. Yeah. So we'll hear a voice. I, I heard a voice. And yes. <laughs> that first time, it's a little. Yeah, <laughs> a little sudden. cards for banking that need to be signed because the change of the deputy treasurer and so this is just the signature of the chairman and um, there are two places for you to sign okay. on each one of these. On the table, you have proposed changes to um, the deputy county treasurer job description. Mm -hmm. um, I believe this was previously discussed mm -hmm. with the treasurer, changing from the traditional uh, one deputy to two deputies, uh, deputy one and deputy two. And those, uh, the job descriptions, can't we send this by email to you? I don't know if you've looked and seen that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so, I've looked at it. Okay, so we need to have um, official approval of the job descriptions before we can take any uh, action. 
description on a salary sheet or anything like that. Were there any questions on the job descriptions for Deputy County Treasurer 1, Deputy County Treasurer 2? Kent, did you have any questions? No, I've reviewed it. Okay. If not, is there a motion to approve the job descriptions? Can I make that motion to approve? Deputy County Treasurer 1, Deputy County Treasurer 2, motion by Commissioner Dalkey. Second. Second. Second, Second by Second. Commissioner Crowfoot. Sorry, I beat you to it, Kent. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried 5 0. Thank you. And we do have two salary sheets for the two new uh, deputies. Yeah, it might not be a great shelf. <laughs> and pair felt good. The county mm -hmm. treasurer. Yes. Deputy County Treasurer. Yeah. Did I say something else? Well, you said deputies, and I sometimes think over there sometimes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, Deputy Treasurer, one yeah. two. So the salary change, Julia Enzigmeyer, Inzminger. Uh, from 3342 a month to 3347 effective February 1st, change from motor vehicle coordinator to Deputy Treasurer, two. Salary change for Tina Gruning from 3037 a month to 3347 a month, effective February 1st. Change from motor vehicle coordinator to deputy oh, treasurer. That's not her, that wasn't her previous title. That's not correct. Okay. Let me, yeah. Do you want me, I, let me get the. Uh, what would the? I don't remember <laughs> offhand. Okay. Can we but just, it is a change to <coughs> deputy treasurer okay. one and from her current position. Change from current position to Deputy Treasurer. recently and you know we do have a lot of surplus property um, that is just being stacked up in different locations right now we are uh, supposed to offer those items to the public because uh, tax dollars being involved in the purchase of a lot of it and uh, the department heads were interested in seeing if the Commission would potentially um, allow us to move forward with a sale but um, they were interested in seeing if we could um, contract with the Vendescas, uh, Pills and Pack Rats. They have a, that auction service and they have that building in Hillsboro. So I got some information about that, Good. what that would look like cost-wise. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of the department heads was if we had somebody that could just come and get the stuff and take it, that oh, would yeah. save us, like, like it would save staff time of trying to Call it, figure out where to store it, uh, all of those yes. things. So the county people could be working on their duties right. instead of trying to figure out all of that. So I know that there is property out at the county lake. There's pro a lot of stuff in the attic that needs to be taken care of. We have furniture coming out of the treasurer's office yeah. right now that they're getting new, and we don't really have anywhere to go with it. Um, there's items in the building at 1240 Commercial that you all were wanting to sell those could potentially be included um, and so there's just a lot of, there's also property like there's some cabinets that are coming out of the annex that have nowhere to go and they're wanting to move in and they're just sitting over there so we have kind of a jumble of items <laughs> that could potentially so go to a what sale is, what is the 
So oh, yes. let me let me give the information to okay. you yeah. uh, because it was a little bit more than I was expecting. But I haven't done, done anything like this or been involved in anything like this for a really long time. So uh, when I spoke with the Vendescas, there they charge a thirty five percent fee off the top for the sale and, and everything. The county also would have to pay advertising and pay for the uh, helpers at the sale for two cashiers, a clerk, and a, um, the person that kind of holds up the items. There's rent for the building of $200, and if they move the items and set it up over there, instead of us doing it, it's $15 an hour. So I don't know if we have, you know, the stuff we have is valuable enough to really, you know, to, but uh, anyway, uh, they would want to have, they said that we could, um, like two weeks before, start moving, and so, um, and we were uh, talking about potentially looking at a date of April 14th or April 21st to hold it, hold the sale, so start moving at the beginning of April. So it's it's fifteen bucks an hour is cheap to, to move stuff. I mean, it usually yeah. takes two Price people. Sales high. Yeah. I think it's a good deal. Well, one thing is that this, if we have staff do it, it's going to take a tremendous amount of time I mean, away I mean, from our primary duties. And then what is it? Hundred bucks an hour? Yeah. When you break it down. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if we didn't make any money, just it always. If we we guys would be gone. <laughs> right, and we'd be and we'd be following the statute as far as right. allowing the public the opportunity to uh, purchase those items. But as long as it didn't cost us, this stuff doesn't sell high enough. Right. We don't so know. we would definitely, regardless, have to pay the two hundred for the building. We yeah. would have to pay whatever the setup and and the personnel yeah. would be for the sale, and then we would have. Uh, the advertising, so the cost of sale bills, which we could we could put out at our discretion wherever we yeah. wanted to, and then there's just a couple of online advertising things that they recommend, which are twenty dollars each. So those that's reasonable. Yeah. If the county wants to do more advertising, that's more expensive. We can, but uh, they've cheap. got a pretty well established yeah. group of followers that It'd be cheaper than the sheriff's. So. Yeah. So anyway. Um, if we can is there any, any close up uh, so once it move, moves out of here it doesn't come back is there anything like that they will sell it or and what if it doesn't I bring didn't anything? ask that question but um, I will just make sure that that is a, I, a, I, I guess if it doesn't bring a bid then it can my statute it can just be they can disposed of they can right. dispose of it. then right. it can be disposed of right take it to what what close fees be but then it's a matter of holding it to the transfer station. 15 bucks an hour. Got to gain the haul it. So, yeah. Hopefully, everything will drink something. Kent, did you have any thoughts? Oh, I think I, I think it's uh, probably the most cost effective way that we can do it without having to get staff so heavily involved. I mean, there'll still be some staff involved because we'll have to mark right. the items that we want them to take. But it won't be as near as involved as if we're pulling. I mean, mm -hmm. really, realistically, what we would have to do would be pull road and bridge crews mm -hmm. and crews from different places to load that stuff and haul it and county equipment mm -hmm. and, and so. a lot more fifteen dollars an hour. Yeah, okay. I think it's a good idea. Also, I like the idea of a deadline because we've been talking about this for a long time. Right. We set it up. We have a deadline. We move. It's accomplished. Just make it a yearly event. I think the first one's the toughest. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Yep. So is there potential, I mean, is the, the board potentially ready to approve something like that for I us? To make the motion to? that we approve uh, the proposal okay. from the Mendescas. Can we have a motion to approve the proposal from the Mendescas? Second by Commissioner Gary. Other discussion? <coughs> Not all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carried 5 0. Okay. That wow. gives us something to work towards because that's been a, a project that we've been trying to do yes. for 
Mm -hmm. It would be nice to have that one off the list. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Great. Uh, that was the last thing I had for our agenda items. Finished with administrative. Okay, we'll move into the presentation from uh, Haley and Randy. Yeah. Appreciate you being here today. Sorry about the wait. If you yeah. would sit by that microphone, Absolutely. it'll help our online audience okay. be able to hear. And I actually have Derek with me today. Randy oh, Derek. Okay. No, it was Randy, and then uh, he had to stay back. So yeah. We have to stay back. So uh, okay. Derek. He could yep. so. so I'll go ahead and get Can I take one for a picture of that Yeah. Do you want to resign in his spot or do you want to? I'll just have to pick it up anyway. <laughs> 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 I didn't know if you had one cohesive stack coming on you. Or... Okay. Yeah. If you want me to do whatever packets stacked in, I can do that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I have three. Otherwise, I'll tell the public. I have. Here you go. You can have mine. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'll be talking. Oh, you can have mine. Oh, you can have mine. I'll be talking. It's over there. Very good. All right. It's a nice breeze. Too. You're in the right spot. Yeah, I am. <laughs> well, my name's Haley Marple, and I'm with UKD Companies. Again, this is Derek Dick that's with me. Um, we actually attended the county conference last November and we met Mr. Profit, uh, Randy and I were actually the ones that talked to him. And he just kind of told us that you guys are new in May, I believe, with your health insurance. Um, and most people are always willing to, you know, hear different ideas, hopefully hear some ways to save money. Yep. So we're just here to kind of tell you the things that we can do and then hopefully get the opportunity to at least provide you a quote. Um, depending on and then um, if you guys want to kind of speak to maybe what you currently do for health insurance, things you like about it, dislike, anything like that. I guess I'm going to put Tina on the spot. Okay. <laughs> Lucky you, Tina. That's, it seems to be the clerk usually that gets to uh, Well, I mean, we're, we have, um, we're fully insured with okay. the Cross Blue Shield at this time our renewal is next week i mean we will get our renewals next week typically we don't um kind of move forward with anything until we know what our renewal looks like right and mm -hmm. so uh, they're scheduled for that next week okay excellent great we uh we're very fond of blue cross as well it's a good company a lot of people work with them um we do a lot of work with blue cross as well and um, something that's important to note is after we are established with Blue Cross going forward, a lot of times we can help to negotiate the rates and things like that. Um, UKD has a large book of business with Blue Cross, so that can kind of help us from time to time. Um, I do want to just point out that we also have a strong relationship with other carriers. Um, you guys are fully insured. We can absolutely still do that. We have options to do self-funded, level funded. Um, different things like that and there's also something called a gap plan which a lot of counties have started doing um, just kind of a cost saving measure so we're able to do lots of different things and if Blue Cross is you guys love that and we're absolutely happy to work with them as well okay. <clears throat> some of the services that I really wanted to point out um, there's a lot of HR concierge kind of things included which might not be too big to the uh, commissioners but the county clerk when it comes to 1095 filing, uh, keeping track of what everyone's enrolled in, um, things like that, any questions, you know, FMLA, things like that. They have someone on call that you can call at any time and ask questions to, which is just a service that's included. Um, a part of that that we like to discuss is an online platform called Employee Navigator. And so we know a lot of times at counties, people don't want to get on a computer to look at their benefits or enroll or anything like that. But we're happy to help them enroll. And then this can help the clerk, you know, every, everybody's kind of on that same platform and you can see what they're enrolled in, what their deductions are and things like that. Yeah. Do you have anything to add to that at all? Uh, the good thing about employee navigator is once it gets established enough, it usually takes about a month to get the file feeds up. But it does all your COVID administration for you. So um, if someone would terminate, um, you can just go in there and terminate with the employee navigator system. Um, you can do that, or you can tell us who that employee is when you determine. And that sends to all the carriers, Blue Cross, uh, Delta Dental, whoever you use for all your benefits, and it automatically terms them at all 
um, by all cares, and then sends covert notifications to them. So that kind of takes that whole piece um, out of your hands and does that for you. Um, another thing that's beneficial about kind of the HR side is, um, you know, there's lots of ACA guidelines, there's lots of paperwork that needs signed about fees and things like that. They're going to keep track of all that. If there's ever anything that you need to be notified of, we're just going to send that straight to you and you won't have to worry about keeping up to date with that. There's a lot of particulars when it comes to health insurance, and so we're just going to make sure that you're up to date on everything you need to be. Um, Else you want to add um, one thing she mentioned earlier, we, we do, we go over to Blue Cross a lot. We, we love Blue Cross. We're actually one of the uh, biggest brokerages that use Blue, Shop, Blue Cross to show in Kansas. Um, one thing that we do a lot is sometimes groups have no interest in leaving Blue Cross. They love Blue Cross. Uh, but once we get that renewal, um, if you don't have something to compare to, you can't really negotiate. So uh, me personally, for example, and I can give you a reference you want, um, there's two school districts that we enrolled this past year that were Blue Cross, had no interest in Blue, Leo Blue Cross, they got their Blue Cross renewal. Um, we went out and got quotes from United Healthcare, Aetna. Uh, those were lo lower rates. Um, in one instance, I was able to get the Blue Cross renewal down 12%, another one 9%, just because we had a competitive quote that we could take back to Blue Cross and say, hey, these carriers coming at this, um, you know, if you don't come down so, you know, they might switch. Um, Blue Cross wants probably to maintain your business. So a lot of times we can leverage those renewals and get renewals down simply by doing that. And that's something we have a lot of luck in doing. Yeah. So really, um, you can, I won't go through all the information. You guys can look some more at it. But really today, we're just coming to ask that when you do get your renewal, if you would allow us the opportunity to bring you a quote and present it to you as well. Um, again, we're happy to use Blue Cross and stay with that and then to add on our services that we can help to, uh, you know, improve your employee benefits or to, you know, get some other options and show those to Blue Cross as well. How do you get paid? Uh, so we, <laughs> it depends, that's a great question. It depends kind of on the carrier. A lot of times commissions will be included in the premium. Like right now, you, someone at Blue Cross gets paid for having your group, you know, they just kind of include it in that premium amount. Um, sometimes Blue Cross will include ours, sometimes we have to bill it separately. Um, and it's just like a per employee per month fee, and then that's what helps to include the human resources and things like that. There's always someone getting paid, it's just kind of wherever it is. Mm -hmm. Any yeah. new care outside of Blue Cross would be a PEPM that would be built into the quote. Um, since Blue Cross Blue Shield already has your business, uh, a lot of times they won't go add that in. So um, those are things, you know, like the employee navigator, or the HR services, uh, or you know, if we can prove our, prove our worth by getting your renewal down by 10%, um, you can still use a brokerage and save money that way, then we just charge a PPM, um, generally $25 per month. Um, that doesn't include dependents, that's just uh, employees only, but generally that route. How many other counties in Kansas do you have? Uh, Katie has several within our office. We have probably four well, I have other five. Other county, Katie Companies has mid to upper 20s. Yeah. Uh, we've mm -hmm. been told that the clerks have an email chain that goes around mm -hmm. with the clerks, and uh, we've been told that they talk about insurance a lot on there. I don't know if <laughs> you're on that chain or not, <laughs> uh, but uh, we could definitely give you some, some uh, sure. referrals mm -hmm. or some mm -hmm. people that we use. But, I think um, our company has close to 30 um, counties in the state of Kansas, okay. mm -hmm. a large book of mm -hmm. counties with them. And, yeah. uh, and it seems like every county kind of does something different. Some, sure. You know, some prefer to be self-funded, some right. fully insured, but uh, I think the services that we can help provide is what kind of keeps them all with us, no matter the carrier. There's a lot of value add things that uh, a lot of people like, you know, the HR support, there's 24 seven HR support, uh, there's oh, it has to tell a doc, things like that that you're always welcome to use. Um, the employee navigator is really good. It kind of takes all the tax reporting out of your hands. You know, it's all housed in there, so that stuff is uh, a click of a button. It's e file to the IRS, um, as long as that employee navigator is kept up to date. So it kind of takes a lot of things off of your plate. Uh, it can connect to your payroll. A lot of people don't like doing that, um, but if Anything, anything that could help, you know, that you, you want to explore, there are options for that connecting to your payroll and reporting and things like that. And, 
Um, we are very hands-on. We like for your employees to know who we are. Um, we like doing that initial enrollment if we're lucky enough to get business employee meetings to come out and you know meet with them, go through exactly what their benefits are. There's a lot of benefits that um, is built into health plans that people aren't aware of. Um, that you know we like to point those things out. There's a lot of things that you can save money with inside the health plan. You know if you go to a standalone MRI center as opposed to the ER, you know, that's going to be about a third of the cost of going to a, an MRI center in, in the hospital. So things like that, we like to point out that help your employees save money, which in return, help your renewals. Um, we like to do quarterly meetings with all of our um, commissioners if you allow us to, just kind of review how the plan year is going. I know you guys work off of a budget, um, you know, we're very familiar with mm -hmm. counties, uh, like I say, we've been sure for many, many years. so. We know around election time to stay away. That's a busy time, so um, we kind of know how you know the counties work, and so. But we'd like to come around and meet with you guys. You know, um, if we see you know a lot of people, uh, we've done one recently. A lot of people, a uh, county had a lot of diabetics, so we tried to provide some training. Um, you know, healthy eating, things like that, to kind of head off some of those things that make your you know staff more healthy. But anything that we can do along those terms. Um, help save you guys money in the long run and, and those are things we've had good success as we have uh, you guys do a health fair currently no. with Blue Cross what? no uh, not for our employees okay that's something we sometimes if you know with your blessing we do a health fair is kind of help employees how they can manage their health cost saving measures and um, a lot of good resources that we can do in there and then um, you know as, as far as you um, they, they have, and there's information on here, they send out a, a monthly flyer, um, you know, one month might be over FMLA, the next month it might be over COVID administration, just things in there that, you know, there's some regulations, guidelines that um, you'll get constant flyers on that, that this help remind you of those things, we also will remind you of those things, and any of that stuff that we can do for you, we do, um, anything we can take off your plate, we know the clerks uh, wear a lot of hats, mm -hmm. have a lot of things they cover, so anything that we can take off your plate in particular, we're always happy to do so. Uh, okay. Any other questions from commissioners? Commissioner Becker, did you have any questions? Not right now. Okay, just want to make sure you're included. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thank you very yeah, much. We'll be in touch with the and you guys can let us know. Great. Well, thank you so it. much thank for you your time. Thank you for coming in. Yeah. Sign out or no? Okay. Just, yeah. Okay. Thank appreciate you. It. All right, sheriff. Next, next, next. Got your pen ready? I do. <laughs> <laughs> you got the red one out. Might as well. <laughs> Did you guys get the email this out? Yes. Everybody? Okay. Uh, my quarterly meeting here. Um, staffing and new hires. Bruce Burke will start February 8th, which is Wednesday. Um, Presley May just graduated out of academy. Uh, KLATC on the 3rd. He started on Sunday. Um, he uh, did fine. He's going to go through an FTO program now with Sergeant Matt Regeer. And it'll be a three-step process. I don't look for him to be out on his own probably for several more months. Uh, I just want to make sure that he uh, has everything he needs and the tools he needs before he has to work by himself and causes any issues. He's been through college now? He's been through the academy. Yeah. He's been oh, he's been through the academy. Yeah, he's done. Yeah, he graduated. Okay. He graduated. He started uh, as a 14-week academy. He graduated, like I said, Friday. Um, 16 weeks starting after this now. If anybody goes to the academy, 16 months. Yeah. <clears throat> or you can go over to the Kansas Highway Patrol and lateral with a four week training period. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, that's, that's not my know. Highway Patrol is four weeks. If you have prior ex no. how many years of experience you have, you can lateral over. Uh, um, so those are kind of the new ones. I, I did put something on here that Larry reminded me of. Eric Christner, he's our. Uh, of our detectives. Uh, our, he's done an ab absolutely wonderful job with our uh, sex crimes with our children and, and uh, young females. Um, he, uh, to tell, tell you, I probably think he's, he's been through the schools, educating the schools on what is actually a crime and what is not a crime via the phone or anything like that. Um, 
I bet he's holding somewhere 20, 25 cases right now. Wow. I mean, it's unbelievable how many cases are out there. And a lot of what we see is once we educate the public, then we see an uptick of the crime because they didn't realize it was a crime. The reporting. Yeah. Um, and we are, he is diligently um, seeking charges after every one of those um, to send a message out. Um, the big one for the day, but we have some more after this, is uh, dispatcher vacation vampire issues. Uh, dis dispatchers are running up against their vacation right now. Um, I think I sent my print out to you guys. Um, my main concern right now is my 911 director. She's going to be coming up in December on 160 hours. She's sitting on 160 hours. And of course, you see my letter how short we were. Uh, I don't know what the answer there is. I've been Larry and I have been looking at um, maybe some different scheduling, but what's happened to have two people on the consoles, that's almost impossible to change that up. Uh, that's where that other two that were missing come in and people can fill in and take vacation. Um, I looked at, I don't know if you guys looked at any uh, pay receipts or hours. Um, I've got some dispatchers turning 300 hours in pay for that. And they're getting more out and they're getting tired. I don't know what the answer is here, but I, I promised them that I would come talk to you guys about it. Um, I think we've only got, I think our closest person is in October. That would be coming up on some hours. Um, but I think if we can get her seven hours, that'll help her. She'll get enough and it'll only reset her to 160 hours. Um, but That's I, still not solving the problem. It's not solving the problem. No, it's not solving the problem. We're just not, we got one person right now that uh, has applied when we just started the process of uh, doing the background checks and doing the reference checks and everything. Um, we've had a ton of people apply, but then they don't ever follow through. You know, it's almost like they're check filling the out the paperwork to check the box to get whatever employment or whatever they need. I mean, they don't even return a phone call. They don't show up for a meeting. They don't, we've scheduled, I don't know how many times for testing, two or three people, and they just don't show up. Um, the two that we lost, of course, you know, they're, um, last year we, one of our dispatchers passed away who's in training, and, and our youngest dispatcher that, that resigned, you saw in that letter, I mean, she realized that it was more than she wanted. Sure. It was just, and she was honest about it, and I gave her props. I mean, to, right. to they'll say that out loud and say, I can't handle this, that's huge. Right. And she knew that. And that's somebody that was already sitting on a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and said, I, I don't think I can do that. I don't know what the answers are there, but we need to be thinking about them and see what, I, I mean, I'm not talking pay or anything like that, but I, I'm looking at what I'm gonna do with 160 hours coming and 160 hours setting on the books. Um, and I don't know schedule-wise if I can make it happen um, just because of the time on the consoles. Um, well, that's what I think we can fix, but the, the big issue is what, I mean, Throw, give us ideas. What, what can we do? Well, I saw my, my 911 dispatchers, your lead dispatcher, just brought to my office right before I walked over. I guess Marion County Core Communities is having a job fair here pretty soon in Hillsboro at the fairgrounds. I just heard about this. Who's having one? Marion County Core Communities. And they're inviting basically everybody in Marion County, it looked like, according to the flyer, to the come. Ones, participate. The ones that are yeah. putting together the. the daycare yep oh okay okay so well, i didn't know about it but i, I know who, who you're talking you about. can piece it together yeah <laughs> yeah they just put it out today for us i can tell is the dispatcher probably to me anyway so yeah. we're we've already heard about it in 10 minutes and said we make a plan to get a booth set up and Good. let's get somebody over there county on a set one up county wide yeah and yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea explain what capers does for you yeah. 20 years down the road, you could retire. Hopefully. Depends <laughs> on what 20 years from now looks <laughs> like. That's what it is today. A big change, but it doesn't. Um, promote the advantages. Yes. So, we're good. I guess my request for you guys, as far as this dispatch situation would be, is. Uh, Podium mic is terrible. Okay. Uh, is sorry. that better? Is that better? Yeah, or, or I'll just stay on the phone. Uh, I'm gonna create an echo that way. Yeah. Try it. Try it now. Can can you hear me? Let me 
existed. Uh, There's hardly anything coming out of that podium, Mike. Is it, is it on? <coughs> yes, it's on. He's, he's that mumble. It's on. Can you hear him now? Randy, Patricia, whatever it is. Go ahead. Kent, can you hear me now? Yeah, a little better. How is that? That's a little better. Did that help any? Go ahead and then we'll see. Okay. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think that podium mic's even working. Um, so I guess my request now, uh, I guess, Commissioner Becker, did you have something you wanted to ask before I continued on? So I guess my request would be that uh, we keep this in our minds um, for a couple of my dispatchers that are going to be running up against their vacation. Um, we'll do what we can try to do. Maybe we can get some data there. We don't have it. But I may have to come back in and ask for some, some latitude for the vacation to see if we can extend it out or something to get it mm -hmm. get it where it needs to be and be fair to them. Because I, what scares me is. is you know, when you take people when they're down, you know, that's not the right time to do it. And I think right now that might be what had happened. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody was aware of the situation we were going to get face. Um, number two, uh, Mary Peabody Police Department's, I'm only speaking on what I know, Mary Police Department hasn't hired anybody to my knowledge this time. Two officers on staff, the Sheriff's Department still covering nights and weekends. Um, we haven't been too inundated with them. Um, the good thing is, is Mary PD, as soon as they come out the next morning, Anything that wasn't a 911 call that we had to respond to, they're picking up and doing the investigation on it. Sure. So it's kind of helping us out. Uh, Peabody Police Department haven't hired anybody to my knowledge. Uh, I don't even know if they've even interviewed anybody yet. Uh, so the Sheriff's Department is covering 24 7, and we all know that um, there's some city ordinances that we can't enforce as, as the sheriff's deputies. Um, code enforcement, we don't do. Um, we have been requested to do some transports from inmates for Peabody, either from here or to their court system. Um, I have declined to do those transports. I gave them information to the transport company, and I just don't feel that um, if they're going to continue to hold court, that it should be at the expense of the sheriff's office. Right. I think it'll be at their expense. I mean, it costs money to transport people, and uh, I don't. I didn't budget. I didn't make a line item for Peabody Police Department for every budget season. So um, that's kind of where we're standing at with that. Uh, I'm, as soon as I hear something, I'll let you guys know. Uh, number three, vehicle uh, and repair issues. These Dodge Durangos are whew, uh, probably one or two a week in the shop. Um, and I don't know what the issue is with them. I don't know if that's because they were built during the COVID period or what the deal was, but they're just, we're, we're getting them from the troop, we're getting them at $29,000. And it sounds like a pretty good deal, but when I've got five ten thousand $10,000 into a vehicle on a repair, it's not so good anymore with no warranty or anything else. Oh, so, what kind of mileage are you looking at? I mean, yeah. uh, we get them at 49,000. I've got some at 120,000. I've got some right around that uh, 70 to 90,000 right now. I think I have one maybe with 140 on it. Uh, so, we're trying to get as many miles as we can, but uh, at some point it becomes uh, that's a new point. You got to do something different. So, we're doing some research. Um, I'm gonna do my best to see if we can get something bought within the county from the people who we serve in the county. I, I'm a firm believer in we spend our tax dollars within our county. Um, but we also be reaching out to a place like CERB and uh, other places like that, people who solely do patrol vehicles. And we're gonna just get a bunch of bids, kind of see where everything goes um, and see what our next options are. I don't wanna make a ill fated jump or something that. You know, it's going to cost me a long run like these Durangos are now. Yeah, two on your budget this year. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, but we priced uh, V6 Dodge Durango. At, now, this is outfitted. This is with all everything on it um, that it would take to go down the road minus uh, in car camera. Um, and you're still looking at $51,000, uh, which is kind of feasible. That was for the V6, the V8 was $54,000. Kind of ballpark the Chevy Tahoe, just kind of see what they were in. The unequipped were fifty-one thousand. Okay. Uh, 
So the uh, I got to sit down with Hillsboro Ford and give them opportunity to completely spec an Explorer out um, and kind of see maybe maybe Ford would be the way to go for right now. I don't know, uh, but I'm gonna give everybody Midway Hillsboro Ford a chance to do something before we step outside of the county. I don't like doing that. Good. Uh, if anybody you guys ever have any ideas or hear something, let me know, please. Uh, if there's some other entity out there that you know. Um, <clears throat> That. Number four, registered uh, offenders compliance. We'll be teaming up with the KBI and the U.S. Marshal Service to make home visits uh, for registered drug, violent, and sex offenders living in Marion County. Actually, the KBI came and visit with me. We talked about it. They they did this in another county, and they were able to get 101 registered offenders checked in at one day. Um, they provide uh, basically all the manpower except for maybe two or three of our own people, and they just start hitting the you know, group takes 10 here, group takes 10 here, go inside the county, you check them, make sure they're within compliance. Um, and that's just the overall safety of our of our community. You know, just make sure that what they're telling us on paper is what they are actually doing. Um, and seized vehicles. Um, we've got six vehicles back there for seizure. Uh, I'm just waiting for the final paperwork to come through, and then we're going to put them on purple wave auction them off. Um, we've got two patrol cars. I'm a little bit hesitant about getting rid of them right now. Because um, <laughs> we're going to be completely staffed and two go down. I mean, right now we've been lucky because we've been robbing Peter to pay Paul as far as, you know, some days off duty or we get the lake patrol vehicle that we can swap around a little bit, but that's not going to be very feasible here in the next two days. Those are my main concerns right now. Do um, you guys have any questions? You had an email about a meeting coming up Thursday with the Coordinating Council on the Star. Oh, yeah, 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 I forgot about that. That's actually the one of the neatest things I've done since I've been here. Oh, okay. <laughs> ends on a good though. Yes, <laughs> so uh, we were actually the first county in this side of the state that uh, our size that was asked to, to uh, participate in this. And what it is, is on Star's coming in and rapid, uh, rapid deploys coming in. And these are systems that we already have the capability in our uh, dispatch center and that will cost us nothing. Wow. Um, and they're gonna come, they're gonna bring a couple of news crews in and they're gonna, we're gonna run a mock scenario. Um, you guys will be allowed to go into the EOC and watch that scenario out if you want to. Um, it, it's so amazing what we, they can do with a vehicle, like if we have an OnStar, and you know, like Ford has you can, or, uh, Dodge has Uconnects and Ford has their their version, but we're using OnStar right now. Um, be it in a vehicle chase, um, when I call the tax come in, we can find out if that's got OnStar on it, and they'll be able to shut that vehicle down remotely. And they won't shut it completely down; they'll just slow it down until sure. it moves safe. Till we get an area, we can tell them to shut it down. Um, so they'll be they'll be playing with toys like that, and then also our rapid deploy. I think what's really neat about that is it's a video system that. If you're in the middle of a crime or if you're in the middle of an incident and you need help, you can literally give the dispatcher the right to your phone by word and the dispatcher can grab your phone, turn the camera around and watch everything that they need to see. They can view it live and it's all recorded within the sheriff's office. That's so we, like maybe showing up, maybe even EMS if they're showing up, they'll be able to you know, kind of know what they're going into before we, they get there. Uh, if there's, even if it's domestic or somebody's getting hurt or something, you know, if somebody wants to. Now, the caveat of it is that is if you call in, you're the only one that gives permission. It's not like dispatch can grab it and turn it without your permission or run with your camera or your phone. Once they give that permission, then the dispatcher can take over with your phone and basically walk you through uh, CPR, whatever they wanted to do. They can do whatever. You we need them to do so anyway for the day they're going to come in we're going to start about nine o'clock in the morning we're going to kind of uh, get everything set up and then we're going to have a briefing uh, with everybody and then we're going to do the little mock scenario and everything and then we're going to bring people in for questioning uh, questions and then um, what we think and basically brainstorm what 
we, I think that will be helpful to Marion County mm -hmm. and what wouldn't be. Um, and then also the reason for the news media is that I'll shove it out there so the people in the public also know what the capabilities are at the sheriff's office. And there, there'll be different things like uh, what three words app will be something we'll be promoting on that. And that's the uh, everywhere in the United States there is three words associated with a certain 10 by 10 score section. So if we have a elderly individual who is uh, lost but they have capability of their phone, they can call the sheriff's office and just dial 911. Um, they can ask rapid deploy for cell phone or dispatch for their cell phone. Um, they can take that over, punch in what three words, and that will put us within 10 foot of where that individual is immediately. So I think it's, it's a huge game changer for law enforcement, especially for search and rescue. Excellent. But everybody's invited that wants to come. Um, I think you guys were invited to as well. What, what time would, okay. What time would be appropriate for us to be here? Um, I haven't looked at the flyer. Okay. Um, I think there was a deal on the flyer that said conditioners. Yes. yes. On it. I don't remember what time it was. Maybe it was eight or one o'clock. Noon, one o'clock. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Okay. What day is this? Thursday. No, Thursday. Thursday. The ninth. I think I sent it out last week. Yes. Uh, <coughs> Anyway, yes, we got it. Okay. I'll make sure we get it. I'll have Tina redistribute it to the commissioners. Okay. So you're going to send it to me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody else I'll try. Said something about Lake Patrol. Thought even more about. Oh, yeah, and that's. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I actually forgot about that. I went and talked to Isaac here a while back after our incident at the Kai Lake. And I thought, what a great idea it would be to get Isaac to be part-time certified as a law enforcement officer. Oh. Um, not so much to make a bunch of traffic stops in the county lake, not to <laughs> harass people. But I remember as a kid, growing up around here, that I was petrified of Dale Snelling. <laughs> and it wasn't because he was gonna do something to you, but he had the ability to do something to you. Um, and sometimes as he teenagers- a, He had the flashlight. You know, sometimes as teenagers, we just, Need that little extra. You just need, yeah, you just need Stop. that little bit of, oh, there is somebody who lives out here. If I do this on this side of the county lake, that guy's going to drive right over here. You know, and I, and I explained to him, I said, I'm not after you to do anything major, but what I'm after is, you know, maybe you can make that vehicle stop or maybe you can stop that kid from doing something crazy um, until we arrive, you know. Uh, so it's almost a check and balance move more than anything. So um, I think it's a good idea. He, he wasn't against it, and I told him I'd visit with him more. So, um, it wouldn't be that he'd be on my payroll or anything, but you know, I think that uh, as a part-timer, he's allowed to work 999 hours a year as a law enforcement officer. He wouldn't work a year that, of course. Um, but I think, you know, putting a set of hidden lights in his vehicle and something that'll turn some red and blues on, you know, even if you don't catch somebody, if something's going wrong out there, yeah, the ability to turn the red and blues on, even on the other side of the lake, that's enough for somebody. You know what? I don't want to be here no more. Well, the, the training would be good for us. Yes. Oh, yeah. Just in the situations he's already in. Yes. Mr. Dolan. And I think that this is crossing the deal that we've we've crossed this line before with with applicants when we hired for the lake. Okay. And some wanted the gun, sure. some didn't want the gun. Sure. And and that's a it's a point that you have to look at from a big picture. Not, sometimes just the person makes the difference and so and, and I'm, I'm not degrading what Jeff just said I'm just saying be aware of what we're doing here uh, what you're what you're opening your our person to and is he, every time they think he's a law officer that he gets out of the truck I mean if they know this and everything so uh, because that's what we thought of Dale Snelling yeah. we thought he was a law officer and I and I I concur with <coughs> his thoughts on this. That's a very, very, very good point. And, and just, is he up here thinking that? That's, we had one person that wanted to know what's going on to get in the interview too, so. Well, it, <laughs> it's you just, know. It just, it's a, it's a good question, a good point, and I, I don't mind it. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure. Well, there's, there's a lot of questions. So what do you think, Isaac, you have to carry a gun? I understand that, Dave. But if they think you're a law officer, what do you think a law officer does? Carry a gun. 
Well, I think to the uh, I think you're 100 percent right when you say it depends on the person. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, you know we there's a, there's a lot of guys that can get my job done that you know don't have to carry a firearm. They're yeah. just the yeah. way to handle people. And, you know, visiting with Isaac in the last you know several meetings I've had with him out here, um, very little headed young man. Oh, um, yes. And I think that you know that that's the road to where I was thinking about. Um, so, but I, I did very good points about about commission. Just, just think about it because where are you going with it? I mean, right. we we didn't hire the one that asked what size gun we get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a red, red four right like there. Is that the question that we did on out? A couple questions again. Mm -hmm. How many smaller counties than us? I don't know about larger counties than us. But how many smaller counties than us do you think still has one dispatcher on duty? Not very many. I, I would like to know that because I know yeah. Western Kansas and stuff is tough on that. And from all the years <laughs> that I sat and listened to the radio, with CB or cell phones wasn't very accessible at that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's cell phones is. What percentage? Thirty-five percent of your income? Forty percent? Uh, probably more than that. More than that, yeah. And so, and everybody has cell phones today, so a lot more calls, a lot more than that. But um, you know, and then the medical issue—that's uh, that was given to us before we had to have two secretaries or two two uh, two people sitting on duty. Uh, we did not have it before, and it's not a bad thing. But it costs you money, and that's another person plus training. In it. So, and we've upgraded our medical fields in this county, where we had all volunteers before. So, there's some different looks at it here to how we come about. That we we could call for an ambulance today. Chances are you're going to, you're going to get one of the two out of Marion or Hillsboro. Uh, so, just there's a lot of things that. Has affected that job. Yeah, and, absolutely. And created it. I mean, the medical field takes a little more, of the, and I, I don't know, have any idea how many counties are still down to one. But well, we'll do some research, see if we can figure that one out. I don't have any idea. I just see this would be interesting to know because it, it used to be a lot, but it's changed. Yes. I mean, yeah. today's world has changed. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I'll give you an answer for it now. No. I'd be kind of curious myself, kind of yeah. bring it up. Just if we had 105 counties with two, we got to have two people sitting there. We need to do something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Any other issues? Uh, no, nothing I can think of. I did find the flyer, and it said uh, Commission and Press, Thursday, February 9th, 1 to 1.30. Okay. okay. And I had forwarded to Tina to forward to the rest of the commission. Okay. So, All right. Um, I know I'll be there. Do we need to do a special notice? I'll just do a notice. Okay. That way, any commissioners that want to be there can be there. Okay. Because I think it would be very beneficial. It's sort of interesting, too, that you said that our system would handle it. I mean, we've done a lot of upgrades in the dispatch over there. So, did, but, did something right. Well, it just it worked <laughs> for this. Yeah. It, you know, I'm pretty shocked of what, what our, our systems have been able to do. And, um, but this is actually kind of weird. Is, we're actually paying for this service. This is a service that's different now. This will allow us to do it for free. So, and on the, the issue you brought up about vacation, bring us a proposal or we're we'll working with Tina to whatever we need okay. to do. Okay, that'll be the take care of. All right, thank you. Yes. How are you, sir? All right, 115 is the generator bid opening. We have about 30 bids to look at. Uh, we do have two bids on each that's good. location, and I connected them by location here. So. Would you want to read them, or would Commissioner Gary want to read them? No, I, I need to abstain from it. I think Matt threw a number, so okay. I need to stay out of it. I'm going to ask you to read them. Okay. You have an orange joke. Yeah. <laughs> it's a double edged sword, though. All right, so for the Marion EMS station, I've got to be reading and writing at the same time. Sorry. So sorry for the delay there. Uh, we have two bids uh, for the 
Marion EMS station that includes the generator and installation. Uh, we have a bid from Funk Electric of Gossel, and the total proposal is fourteen thousand three fourteen thirty two. And then we have a bid from Elcon Electric, and the bid amount is $10,958.24. Is there any size on those? Um, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I didn't the go very, back and the review. The very one was supposed to be quoted in 24 kW. Okay. Uh, I didn't go back and review the bid specs, but we did have some specs. My suggestion okay. would be that we want to uh, review all the proposals yeah. to make sure they meet the specifications before awarding. Right. Yeah, and it does say 24, 21 kW okay. on the um, of electric and same on the Elcon. Okay. But there's a lot of other numbers on here that I don't know what they mean yet. So. That's why your, your recommendation that we staff summarize and bring back for approval next week. Okay, and so then uh, the next one we have would be the Hillsboro EMS station location. And we have two bids. Funk Electric is 13 373 And this is a 26-kilowatt. Can't help you kill it. <laughs> 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 uh, and then we have a bid from Elcon, and that one is thirteen thousand six The next one would be to install a um, the wiring and transfer switch for a generator at the um, Peabody EMS station. And the there are two bids, one from Funk Electric for $2,120.91 and Elcon Electric, or excuse me, Elcon Services, and that is $1,985.34. And then the last location we have or service would be to um, to find the terminated service that uh, at here at the courthouse that used to go to the jail building and to be able to connect that to the annex building here. And so we have two bids for that work. And uh, so Funk Electric for that uh, has proposed twenty four thousand one seventy three seventy six, and uh, Elcon Services proposal is twelve thousand one hundred ninety dollars and eighty cents. Okay, uh, the commission's desire to have Kurt work with Tina to summarize the. The bids, or did you have any comments? No comments this time. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, but anyway, if we could summarize those and bring it back to the commission next week for approval, is that agreeable? I'm out of this one. <laughs> I mean, just to double check everything. Okay. Anything else on the bid opening? Kirk, did you have something? I was just here for the opening. Okay. All right. Um, with that, we'll move to Bud Drews. Yeah. And I'm going to do something a little different. I think Kent Becker's microphone works better. If you'd come over. <laughs> <I'd be kind laughs> of a, you can be Kent Becker for the day. You can be Kent Becker for the I day. I can do that. Uh, turn, his name, turn his name down. Turn <laughs> Kent's name down. <laughs> we'll put Bud up there. It's just another <laughs> microphone, isn't it? I was the same way. I could not hear anything there. I cannot hear Randy. I cannot hear John. Yeah. But I could hear Kent. So I'm going to hope that that microphone works. Uh, <laughs> you want me to start? Uh, give a uh, talk a little bit, and then we'll make sure that Commissioner Becker can hear you. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm here 
to see if we can't make a solution to get rid of the trash that's blowing into our area from the transfer station. Let me check. Kent, can you hear it better at that microphone? Yes. Yes. Good. All right. We're good to go. Okay. Thank you. I don't know where you want me to start with these, but I've taken a few pictures, kind of different. It, it's a couple of them are in the same area, yep. but uh, this is not the first. These were taken on January 17th of this year. Yeah. And my wife and I have probably picked up trash maybe six or eight times since the transfer station switched the way they're operating with the pit. And I just would like to, in fact, today before I came down here, I looked out back and there was four or five bags of trash or empty bags blowing down the railroad tracks. And today's a good day to go down and look at it if you want to. But I just would like to see if we could come up with a solution. You know, maybe make it operate the way it was designed to operate. I don't know. I don't know. You know. And just, just to echo your comment, I know I've received complaints on the same topic. Just to add, it's a, the trash is getting away yeah. off the property. I mean, I know I'm retired, but I don't need anything to do. <laughs> I have plenty of things that I enjoy doing. I don't I, believe it. <laughs> I think you're fibbing. <laughs> yeah. We did ah, Randy. We did meet with Josh last week, yes. right? <clears throat> and talked about maybe getting tarps to roll the other way. Um, something to, to allow the trucks to go in the right. correct way and shut the doors. I know when the, the plan was drawn up and ran, I was still in charge at that time. I was the transfer station superintendent. Randy and I went around, we looked, and we come up with what we thought was a good plan. And I don't understand why that that uh, either iron or rubber uh, yeah. slope wasn't put on that side, you know. Have you personally watched anything come from there when the wind's blowing out of the southwest, bud? Oh, yeah. Is it coming out of the pit? Or? Out of the pit. The wind is coming in the top and going down the pit. Shooting it out of there like a rocket. Mm -hmm. That's... I'm hearing it's the other way, so that's why I said. Well, it's, I guess I, I just that's why I want to just make sure what's happening here because I mean I can go home and take a video right now if no, you want me to. No, I it's <laughs> southwest wind today. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anything over thirty south mile an hour, it's coming. Yeah. yeah. One thing that happens, I would and I don't know if he was around still to remember that that the third guy that we had, we had three engineers. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the third guy never on the finalized plans never told us that that it, the truck could not come in from both ways. Right. And so they don't close that north door because they're parking the trucks that way. Right. I think in the pit. Then the, uh, the tarp is underneath the... The tarp is on the away side now. Yeah. So it's, it's on, on the, the side It's now. on the passenger side now, that's why. And then if, at that point, that's if why they get it on the driver's side, then it would get away from them. Yeah, cliff on the driver's side, or from if it's if it's underneath there, it uh, tears up the tarp. Tears them up. So, yeah, yeah. So you, the why, trash. you know, if we'd have known this, it, I think another five to six foot building width yeah. would have let us drive the truck either way. But, well, and then there's also that uh, what two degree turn coming out the other side. The other side, yeah. It causes a uh, still to get stuff over. Yeah, but it's just enough. I, I think there's a combination of things down there in that pit. It's just, this is if you've seen it coming up out of the pit. Right. That's that's first person I've seen tell me or told me that, and I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So we know how to. Well, you know, because one of the ways could be just what you brought up last week uh, about the short trucks. The I call them mules is what I call them. Mm -hmm. to, yeah. To maybe do that, I don't know. So. To, I know to we, get the door shut. We had checked into that when we were making the plans for this, you know, and I. Are they that much shorter, are they? Oh, they're yes. Short. Yes, oh, yes. 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 Yeah, they're yeah. like a. They're single axle and they're snub nosed. And yeah. Okay. You ever go to Magoria? Yeah, yeah. yeah Magoria, I've seen. Yeah, they're a lot shorter. I've, I've been for the factory. I've been for okay. well, six foot shorter or eight. Right. Yeah. Well, they, but I just. compartment in the cab. I mean, it's. Yeah. <laughs> there isn't yeah. nothing there. You know, yeah. we, we, we toured enough state of transfer stations and we saw where the reason it was built the way it was is so you didn't have that lip sticking out over top of the catwalk 
like the old pit used to be and having the concrete break off. Yes. That's why this was designed this way. Yeah. But, I mean, so what if they shut the door halfway? Is that well, they can't shut the door because they're pulling the truck in the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. They got to. You got to put the. There's no room. Put the ramp on for the, the truck to, on the side. There is on the south side, but there isn't on the north side. Because then, it, then the trailer doesn't line up. You with the can't pit. break it down on top of the hood. Well, I think they do sometimes, but it, it doesn't stop anything. It's okay. still, you're, you're still going to have well, to cut it down. That's already close. Oh, yeah. and instead of 20 pieces, I only get 10. Well, <laughs> I think probably get more. I think the places, the places that we saw, every time we saw them, in the, and we traveled in the wintertime a couple times, it was cool weather. We saw them, when they when we go downstairs where the trucks were at in the pit, they, those doors would be shut. Yeah. Every they, one of them would be shut, and yeah. that would stop. Well, that's that's what that would stop a lot of it. It's so common sense. Yeah. Well, and that's that's what that's we basically intended. required by KDHE is the pit is closed. Yeah. So, so we need to extend the, the door out so we can shut it. We'll put a ramp. Another half million dollars. Okay. <laughs> With the mules, the cheaper. What kind of interest rate you have? Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Would, why was the, the slope not put on that side like it was designed in the plans? Slope on the... In the pit. In to the go pit. over to, to, to put the trash into the, yeah. into the trailer. I mean, that was, that was we we told them where to go and look, bud, and draw us one up like it. And yeah, we didn't get it. I thought it was on the plans, but when I left, unless you guys redid the plans after I left, <laughs> so I don't know. No, we didn't do it. I don't know. We we trusted them 100 yeah. percent, but to, pr to give us a good product. Right. I mean, after the third. Just like the, just like the the grade right now, the grade on the south end. We thought we would have plenty of room. Well, we're seeing that we don't have plenty of room. And I think we need to revisit. I just mentioned it last week at the meeting that, and I've mentioned it to Commissioner Gehring before when he was out there at the transfer station, that to build the south side out, we would have to do something to build it out to get it up to where people don't have to back up that steep hill. Yeah, create a teardrop. Yeah. So right. Roll through there. Yeah. Uh, right. I think, I think well, it's going to be some. With, it's going to, we're going to have to go back and look at it. I mean, we just need to. Well, with the room that was available, that's the best the person could do. do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The first step would be to find a way to get those doors closed. Yeah. And I think the, the tarps, the tarps will, will do that, but then we're going to have rubbing issues coming down the ramp that other way. Because they got to they hug that wall so tight because it's not straight going in there. Yeah. <coughs> We didn't even, it was so much on, on the big maps that we had brought, brought out in front of us, we didn't even notice it. Yeah. It looked straight. But when they built it, two percent is whatever it is, it's quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, after you got that, that trailer behind you and trying to mm -hmm. line that in there straight yeah. mm -hmm. and not swing and hit a door. Um, oh, That's what was yeah. me. But they were. Anyway, if there there's some solution to be able to stop this from blowing, we would greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate you very much. Concerned. Yeah. And, uh, just a quick update: Josh did uh, call me last week and said that the, the manufacturing company for the trailer said they would do the change order at no cost. Oh, change cool. side. Cool. So it's just our existing existing ones that will have to get right. the yeah. retrofit, which is which probably should have been done already. Just that would switch the truck around so we could get the door shut. But that, that's it, that's my, my concern. Yep. I appreciate so, it. Well, yeah. There's a citizen that lives within a block of there. There's also one of the pictures taken that I've seen probably from his backyard. But well, also a guy that in the backyard to yeah. the west of us. guy that used to run it and yeah. thinks things could be better. He so. did have a lot of plastic bags. Yes, most of it is. There's some water. <coughs> Cases of water bags, you know what they come in the, oh. the cellophane, but yeah, yeah. and okay. this this isn't all. Of I could have printed off all the pictures, but I didn't want to. I'm not sure. Commissioner Becker, did you have any comments or questions for Bud? Uh, comment. 
two issues out there. First one we can't do anything about because it wasn't engineered right. Second one is you got to you got to remember this is a trash. It's going to be trash blown around everywhere until you get the employees to buy into the fact you got to keep the place cleaned up. There's always going to be trash blown around out there. They got to buy into it somehow. I can't hardly stand to drive by it, to tell you the truth. I'll second your motion. <laughs> Wish it would have been we have what we have, and so we're going to have to deal with it. And it's going to, part of it's going to have to come from the employee side. We'll deal with a few people. Yep, good comments, Ken. Uh, now let's see if we can do something to get the door shut. That'll cut it down. There's always need. There's always going to be salt. I mean, we just know it. But we got to do like because the trash truck's caught hauling in. It, I mean, trash truck goes past my place, something blows off. Yeah. I mean, there's there's no proof that it comes from the trash station. But if all of that trash is going there, there's it's going to be a string of it. I would tell you, other commissioners here that I received a complaint yesterday about that building. Person said it started out good, but it needs a, needs a whole new facelift. That's that's their words. It says it's and they like to use it, but they said it's, it's it needs a new facelift. So that was just a complaint yesterday. All right. Anything else? If not, thank you, Bud, for coming yep. in. Thank you for letting me meet with you. Thanks, Bud. Mr. Becker, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. We switched mics, so we're going to see if this will help. And then turn the camera back. Okay. Thank you. Basically, there are the, the permit language they're proposing ties the two projects together. I, I think Joan, uh, Commissioner Gehring's comment that we would like a week before we res respond to uh, I guess, what's the department? Department Ag? No, water, water, resources. water resources. We don't want to uh, say no. But I don't think we're quite ready to say yes. Okay. So I guess the response this time we'd ask for another week. Okay. And we respond to it. I can relay that message. Uh, you just want me to come back? Yep. And then we'll come back, back in a week. Next week? Yep. Yeah, okay. See what we got. 
Is that agreeable with the other commissioners? Yes. Yeah, I'm fine with me. Okay. okay, Commissioner Becker, is that okay with you? We we delay for a week on a decision. No. Okay. Very good. Okay. I will uh, let them know, and we'll plan on coming back next week. Okay. Thank, right. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Do we do an eight-minute executive session on personnel performance? Do they call? Do you want to see it? Oh, if Liddell's here. Sure. Yeah. Look at that. Perfect timing. <laughs> it's so rare we're ahead of schedule. Yeah. So this works out great. Well, Liddell, we want to uh, recognize you for 40 years working for Marion County, and that's an incredible, incredible milestone. We appreciate all the work you've done for the citizens of Marion County, and it just you just don't see that anymore. Uh, all the people you've helped, uh, all the services you've helped provide, uh, it's made a real difference in Marion County. Thank you. And we appreciate that. Thank you. It seems pretty inadequate for 40 years, but we have a card and a certificate. Yes. Okay. We don't have any pictures. Not too many people make 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. we have a certificate and then a pin. Okay. Is it okay if I do take letters? a photograph? How bad sure. if we do it? What's your background? You can do it by the fireplace and maybe Phyllis might do it. No, no. <laughs> this is the best so backdrop in the courthouse, I think. <laughs> you gotta stand in front of the seal. Yeah, let's scoot over to this way. Right. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna move this. Well, Never mind. It's all good. Crop we'll it we'll have to crop it. Yeah, maybe raise it up. No, go. you're good. <laughs> okay, hopefully that will be a good photograph. All right. Well, again, thank congratulations. You. Thank you. Thank you very we really much. Appreciate I have a question, though. Okay. How many days out of high school was you when you started? Oh, gosh. Well, I started May 3rd. Well, I was actually out a year. You was out graduated okay. in 81. Okay. So I was a year out and started May 3rd of 1982. Uh, you had to be yeah. pretty close to high school. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lanelle. Thank Thanks for coming over. Yeah. Kent Becker well, thank couldn't you. be here, but he said to. Oh, wish thanks, Kent. This camera is Oh, right. Here we go. Thanks, Kent. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's okay. I thought I heard her voice. Yeah, that's, I'm glad you did. That way I didn't have to wait. Which actually, speaking of that, price is here. So if you're ready. Yeah, way too early. If you're ready to start 20 minutes early. Way too early. We've been knocking stuff out, so see if you can keep it up. Have I ever? No. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the optimism. Becker is online. Yes. So let's get yep. the microphone. All right. Can I actually hear that? Have fuel bids, transport fuel. Uh, MFA was low bid. Of course, these are all or nothing. Good catch, Tim. I'll sit there. Watch it. I feel like left out. You could have participated. I believe you call that groovy. <laughs> groovy. And make a motion to accept MFA unless somebody has a problem. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Dalkey to accept low bid of MFA oil, uh, grand total $25,982.65. Second. Second by Commissioner Gary. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion aye. carried 5 0. There was a whole bunch of permits from EPC services for the uh, transmission line out of the wind farm. The first ones we signed were just for the temporary construction accesses. These are actually for permanent ones. So, you know, you got to get the little tags. Sign here. It's on the third page on every one of them. So. Yeah, I just I was looking for the numbers. No, no, just, we usually do a motion to order. Yeah. They? Okay, I'd move to accept a permit uh, right away crossings 23 2 through 23 15. Second. For EPC services. Second by Commissioner Gary. Any other questions? 
This is just they're going overhead. Yes. Okay. Okay. Not all in favor say aye. Aye. All right. All right. Opposed say nay. Motion carried by the They have started down by the county coming this way. Yeah. Um, then going over the, um, I guess you're going to wait to get No, go ahead. Uh, you're not going to wait five minutes. Okay. Uh, going over the chip seal micro servicing that we've been talking about. Um, I would love to do more work, but I'm still leery about how much more we're going to have to wait past before we get to that point. Um, so I guess my thought is, I think we just hold off on the micro, the extra micro servicing for now. Uh, until we see what our roads are like when we start blade patching. Um, if we can get by with with less blade patching, maybe we have more money in that, if that sounds yeah. fair. Um, I don't want to overcommit and then realize, oh, we're going to blow the big, the, a big line on a budget or whatever else. So um, with that, uh, I did meet with the the engineer that did the pavement or the subgrade design. Um, for 330th from K15 to McPherson County line. We've got a lot of, um, well, we had one big area, big pavement breakup on the edge of the road. Um, I called him out there to give his thoughts as to what he thought it was. He thinks it could be one of two things, um, that we have a bunch of moisture that is being, that's evaporating away from the edge of the road and it's drawing that moisture from out underneath the road or it could be unique areas where we didn't get either the proper cement um, mix in there or um, that we encountered a certain amount of whatever kind of soil that didn't react with the cement. Um, so this is where again? on the, the 330th from the first Rock County, Roxbury Road. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. Uh, halfway yep yeah, yeah there's there's one of them uh, it's just west of eagle on the south side we lost several hundred feet We're about two yeah, two it's, foot on it's yeah. at least six eight inches yep. it's 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 they unique signs yeah and this is actually that was actually repaired uh, under warranty by the contractor because they already showed some distress so you say there's six or eight inches drop that, that the pavement is basically all the way through the asphalt and then into the subway yeah, I, just, I want to make sure, Commissioner Becker, you know, can you hear what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with what you're talking about. Okay, are you able to hear Bryce? Yeah, well enough. Okay. Okay. Um, so anyway, we're, we're at least going to go out there um, and uh, probably put some rock or whatever else in those in those, that bed area there uh, just to try to get it till time we can blade patch it. Uh, obviously trying to put millings whatever else out there would not stick right now um, so we will at least make it to where it's uh, um, much safer than what it is now um, with that uh, looking at a lot of the other stuff stuff that's going on uh, I noticed we've you know we just crack sealed that this last year and I noticed that the crack sealing is um, the, the cracks have really widened out and I don't know why that is but I was going to give the, the contractor that did that work, give him a call and see if he couldn't meet me out there to see what he thinks. Um, it's, I guess, looking at it, it, that asphalt shouldn't be shrinking up as much as it, as it is. Um, but again, you know, it's like this, the designer said, you know, Kansas has one of the um, highest PI clay soils there are anywhere around. And that's, that is affected an awful lot by water and lack thereof. So anyway, uh, we'll at least get the road fixed up to where we can uh, take care of it until we can get some further work on there. But with that being said, his recommendation, which I was kind of uh, agreeing, or well, I was agreeing with, kind of looking for. It's a two o'clock Saturday. I didn't think there was supposed to be any more. It's not all of them, though, either. It's it's sound like bells or Anyway, um, so I would, I, I'm looking to go back and actually chip series this year, which I think would help a lot too if we've got those cracks opening up. 
Um, and I, I may look at it and see if you know, maybe it'd be more beneficial just to go back and recrack seal it or whatever again. So I will get back with you on that. Um, so, but anyway, uh, obviously that big drop off was. How, how, how wide are they? That they're they're not like large, but I mean compared to what they were, they you know even in the middle of this winter time they've opened up an eighth to quarter of an inch in places, and uh, even though it was cool that day, they it's, they still as, as much as crack seal as we put on the last year, um, so but anyway, um, just we'll follow up with you on that, but we'll at least go where it's uh, go back and uh, make it uh, safe until we can do more work with it, so. Um, but anyway, I, I didn't hear an awful lot of opposition to waiting on the microsurfacing. Um, I did meet with them last week. He told me that they were probably looking for July or August work here, simply because uh, with the work we're doing, then the wind farm should be totally out of the way. So that wouldn't be a problem. So, but that's, that's as of last week's schedule. So they're gonna start bringing in material. I think he said in, what he said for sure. I want to say it was March or April, so they'll have plenty of time to bring in. Um, they're going to store stuff at Pilsen, the Peabody shop, and then I believe at Tampa. So, um, anyway. I'm starting to get a little concerned about 330th east of Tampa. Yep. There's, I don't know how Nighthawk are you having issues. A couple spots. Yeah. That's yeah, there's there's a couple spots, and I, I'm sure it's just water yeah. down below somewhere. But again, we'll we'll just have to watch them if we need to go in there and do some work before we do that. Then right. that's what we have to do. Unfortunately, even though we do it in 12 inches of that process, there's there's still stuff down the road. That well, and then the chip chip seal cover over. I, I going back, Commissioner Donkey wanted to do it at that time. It was two inch asphalt over, right? but it was just money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. But anyway, I, I think that, you know, by doing this, it's definitely going to help that situation. Yeah. But yeah, there's going to be quite a bit of late patch there. Yeah. 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 We're, uh, the microsurface. yeah. We're, uh, obviously, we're not in great shape <laughs> in most of the rows, uh, right. unfortunately. So, um, uh, as following up, I talked to you last summer and here a couple weeks ago, I got a, um, an elevation or plan drawn up for the parking lot right okay. next to the courthouse here. Uh, come up about 750 square yards, which uh, based on an estimate or just a rough estimate uh, from a local contractor to put concrete pavement out there with mesh uh, would run about um, 50 to $60,000. Now we could go out to bid with it. Uh, I could you know, see if any of these other contractors would be interested. I don't know if they would, but um, I guess just interesting to see if you'd want to proceed with that or uh, we could go back with, with asphalt, um, but I really think we'd be better off with a, a, a better product with concrete. Uh, phasing, if nothing else, um, anytime you try to do a parking lot like this one here uh, with asphalt, um, typically you, you, you get maybe 10 years out of it and then start showing some big distress. Commission so. thoughts? Uh, the concrete ideas, right? Because every time you do any work on the courthouse, Bring in the boom lift, the twist. Oh, sure. They'll tear that up. Sure. Every yeah. time. And and we already have <coughs> issues. Uh, my the I think well, I guess I just give, give you guys one of these. This is what the uh, the uh, picture of it is. Just showing. Um, the other thing is on the east side here where we have the diagonal parking. We would get rid of that and just put curb and gutter all the way over the top, and then just paint in lines. That way you wouldn't have water sitting in each one of those points mm -hmm. and it sucks up into the to the asphalt and things like that. My plan was to try to save um, as much of the curved sidewalk, which shows on there mm -hmm. um, for the, if you want to say the historical value, whatever else, it's it was there for a reason. So um, basically just removing that as well as the part out here in front. This, yeah, this part here going across. As you go out there, you'll see where the asphalt comes up to it and stuff. So um, we've already got issues out there now again from the water sitting right on the edge of that concrete to, to asphalt pavement. So um, what, what would be the yeah. duplicating the, the parking area that's on the other side, doing something similar to it on the other side? It's just something to where the south side. 
So the south side, so you've got your parking stalls mm -hmm. in here. You utilize more of this space and get some more parking stalls. If that's what you we're going to eventually, and are we responsible for the street parking also, and not ours? No, that's city, from my city. Let me just use it. Okay. <laughs> um, well, and again, if you, if you want to expand that, because obviously we still have gravel coming up to the handicapped stalls as well. Um, that's something to add into. And then I don't know whether there's more uh, issue, whatever else, where we're going to have more drop boxes. You know, we could put them out there as well. Commissioner Bond, before you go saying too much, and I'd like to refer to Tina, whether she's had any input on anybody, but if you walk our sidewalks, we've got a lot of bad sidewalks around this courthouse. I mean, out there where they tore the demolition, went over the old jail, that one's bad, but then this one up front. It's starting to get here. real bad out here, and yes. we've been patching, but it's, the it, patches it's, are it, coming it's out. It's time to and do something. And we need to do something yes. for the sidewalks, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And, so, you know, we could, we could put that, that in there as well. You know, well I'm just that, saying, so. do it one, one bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just want you to be aware of, keep that included, because these is where everybody walks. And, we, yeah. Yeah. and it's and it's really tricky to get anybody to commit to doing sidewalks, sidewalk work, because it's not a big enough job. Yeah, if they don't want to do it, or they don't have time to do it. They're tied in with this, and all of a sudden, you know, that's a good time to do it. Which sidewalks? Yeah, which there's a lot, lot of them. Lot. Lot. There's three yeah. or four of them that I okay. walked on. Yeah. Definitely the main yeah. sidewalk. Yeah. 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 Uh, clear over there and then around. Or corporate C mayor. It depends on how far out you go. I don't know if you've looked at the retaining wall out here. Especially on the that, do that curve. Yeah. Well, it'll be right here and then it'll go out there. So if they just did that, it, it wouldn't. Yeah. But if they did well, more, then, yeah. And again, this is just the That's next preliminary. next step. You know, if you want to come up with something, whatever else, I can go out and do some preliminary looking at the sidewalks. The retaining wall, I don't know how difficult of a fix that would be. It may just be the fact is if you could dig it behind the back side of it, and you may be able just to jack it back into place, because I'm guessing what's happened is either dirt or tree roots that have got out there that have broken and pushed it out. Sure. Um, It'd, it'd be fairly expensive to take it out and put it back in and then it wouldn't look the same. But anyway, that's not the length of it. But anyway, I just wanted to show you what we come up with. And Commissioner Becker, do you have any comment? No. Okay. Uh, I, I guess what I'm reading from the commission is is uh, interest in doing the concrete parking lot. Uh, but let's explore work with Tina on the other sidewalks and sure. the retaining wall. And if we could do that all in one project. Yeah. Uh, is that, am I reading right? Yeah. Okay. Well, we've, we've got, got the consensus. Yeah, I've been actually been thinking about that lately and Good. concerned about because it's there, really starting to get bad yeah, I just want to make sure that we keep everybody sane. Yeah, one fall. And this would be the time to do it. Sure. Yeah. Just, just spend all the effort on this, the courthouse, ste courthouse steps and yeah, things like that. So, yeah. yeah. So, very good. Well, okay. I will follow up. There's a couple there. sidewalk. I don't, some some thoughts I have over here on this side because yeah. you've got to walk down the steps to walk up the ramp if you're going over there. Right. You know, if if there was another sidewalk that took you around flat and flat, yeah. rather than trying to go down those steps yeah. and back up again. Yeah. Which especially moving the you know the, the turning over there. What's the cost there. comparison on concrete and five acre five inches of asphalt? Asphalt's cheaper, but it's not gonna last as long. Well, I know. well and, and to say that the, the asphalt is cheaper, the biggest thing is you want to be have it put in with a paper, and putting that in brings you know brings your cost drastically up by bringing in a paper. The biggest problem is just trying to get it done because you pull 10 foot here, you pull 30 foot here, you pull this, you'll have seams all over the place. Where when you put concrete in there, you tell it where you want it to break and everything else. So. Again, life cycle costs, I think that's the way to go, but if you want me to check into asphalt, I sure can't, just yeah. until that number up. I'm great, the last 50 years. Yeah, one other parking area, it'll last quite a while. One other comment that Commissioner Gearing had, and I don't think you heard, is a lot of the equipment we bring in to work on the courthouse, there's a lot of, well, how did you wheel, do that? Wheel turning, so the, oh, you know, they crab crawl, the, the basket lifts, and nobody ever, migrates it while they're turning they always just crank it and then they, and then they move well then that digs a hole right in the asphalt 
just like a skid steer. The big, the big handlers when they go tall, the outriggers. Yeah, outriggers will depress it. Yes. Yeah. Like I said, I can, I can just uh, get a, a, a guesstimate if you want to say it, because until they know exactly what's going right. on and how thick and everything else, but that's that's the biggest thing is a. a especially with looks wise because you end up with all those joints in an asphalt um, kind of basically kind of like we have out here water infiltrates in those places sure. so, anyway, okay i'll follow up with that okay um i guess uh last week you guys talked about it wasn't here as far as the the road scholar information um i guess i'd like to to follow up with your concerns um I realize it's uh, maybe like in the fact is the end result you know, as far as how much more money it would cost or whatever else. Um, we had a discussion, we had Chase County over for a meeting last week that we discussed a, a bunch of other things, but um, he brought up an interesting thing is that number one, not everybody's going to want to do this, strictly voluntary. Uh, number two, um, they may take a year or two to complete these courses. I'm guessing that almost every one of them will probably go after the Road Scholar one. Um, but as far as two and three, I don't. I'm I'm fairly confident that not everybody would want to do that. And that's simply because you've got to be the right person that wants to take those courses to move up. That's your mid-level supervisors into your managers are the two and three. So I don't know how many of them do that, and we we kind of want to encourage certain people to take that again we can't force them to that um but you know as far as the the, the 20 cents an hour i mean if, if you look at that is that too much not enough you know we could look at that too it needs, um, it needs to be tied to the pavement plan. so what they said last week was that you and i need to get together and figure out what what works and what makes sense okay. by looking so, at the classes and looking at the pay plan okay. maybe they move up a step yeah. Instead of, I got you. Okay, we got to keep the paper. We've done too much work. For <laughs> so we got to anyway, stay with that was, the okay. But there's a way to do it, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, like I said, I just I had heard that um, you know, so during payday. So, um, and too many lists. Okay, we can do that. Um, we're starting uh, a rebuild down on. A union in one tenth today removed some trees and stuff. Hopefully, if the weather holds out, we're going to start doing a lot more of the smaller rebuilds. Um, I'm hoping that the weather holds out. I'd really like to start on major rebuilds, maybe even in March, weather dependent. Um, so, got a lot of stuff lined up, but um, I wanted to make sure to get that, get as much as we've done before we have to start doing blade patching and stuff like that too. So, did you happen to have one of your secretaries give us a? Road rebuild for last year on, on a map where we can see it. Uh, I don't remember that, but I will get that. I just I, I, I know there wasn't a lot. One one of them was the Pawnee Road uh, from 60th to Highway 50. Um, mm -hmm. We had a couple other spots. That a lot more. Nice. Yeah, a lot a lot more of them were done with dirt. Um, well, like them too. We want to yeah. see that. Yeah. I mean, that's we want to see them all. Yeah, we've yeah. got a road yep. rebuilt for last year. Yeah. Going to go back a few few years, just so. I mean, it's good to have a refresher. Yeah, you've been told about it last year, but, you know, following year, it's good to be like, oh, yeah, well, this was last year and this was the year yeah. before. Okay. So three years? Three years, something. That way, if it's falling apart, you'll be like, well, it just got worked on. Yeah. Because three years is still they, just uh, not working. Well, I, and I will tell you, like for one of them, uh, well, Sunrise, north of town here, we rebuilt that in, was it 20, I think it was? Mm -hmm. And it's performing very well. So I am happy with that. So I think if, if done right, and like Pawnee is doing well as well. As well. So I'm um, going to start hauling a, a lot more sand as well now that we're out of a big push for rock. So where do we, where do we stand on the Pawnee Road? We're going to put sand on that. And um, we, we hauled another 150 tons per mile on that here about two, three weeks ago. Of, of what? Of the APAC hard rock. APAC. Uh, oh, and that was another thing. I did finally get confirmation that they're bringing in more hard rock to Florence as well now. 
on, on the black hole rate, not the, not the straight rate. So he's, he, he said they were going to give us 400 tons a day, and I said, great, bring it on. So. Uh, magnet? Yes. Anything on, on that? I mean, we, we've had it in. I thought oh. I told you. Yeah, we got it in, and we, we actually ran yeah, down. North Dakota did <laughs> We were down, we, we ran across the Alney Road several times and did find some stuff. So, again, no guarantees, but the next time well, we start start hauling more of that, we'll have it up as well. But still, every one you get off the road to the West Potential. Yeah. They, had that, they were showing the due diligence and yeah. making the effort. It, it was interesting, the stuff that we did find, I mean, all the other nails and stuff as well. It's like, where's this stuff coming from? Yeah. I guess off the <laughs> trucks or whatever. Yeah. So. Yep. Okay, you said hard rock, right? Yes. Don't we need a plan? I mean, let's just don't go dump it. If I, I think we need to put that hard rock on a road that's either been shaped up or something. Just don't go dump it. I don't know. Well, just, just that's what this is. It's a final, that, final cover. This, yeah, the, that, that's the plan. I don't want to put hard rock on something that we're going to turn okay. around and redo it or whatever else. That, that's a waste of the, the more, more expensive rock. Yeah. Um, that's the plan is to go back and rebuild these, rebuild the base, and then top them off with those. So. And 80th and Golden Run, where we stand on it. 80th and Golden Run. Where the, the, the signs had to be removed. Yeah. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, we need really to get the this. forestry mulcher back over there and get that done. So. And we have all no cement, nope. no crushed concrete nope. or anything. Um, I want to clean out those pitches and stuff like that. So. I didn't get a chance to call you. I didn't run across you last week. Uh, from that intersection going west is about a quarter mile of dirt. Mm -hmm. The bus driver from Gosler, three years ago or so, when we, or four maybe, whenever, it's been a while, she got stuck down in there. She comes down three fourths, half to three fourths of the way, five eighths of the way through that mile, then has to turn around and go back. Okay. But there's been some new kids move in north and south, I think, of 80th and Goldenrod that okay. she has to go there. So, okay. request was to. Uh, see if we could look at that, shape the ditches before we put any, if we put some rock on it. Sure. And it shortened her route up quite a bit. And I will tell you that, I don't know how Jonah feels, but Mr. the superintendent of Gossel, one or two or twice he called me for phone calls on roads, but not very seldom, not very often. And the bus drivers, they, I've never, never got a call. Yeah, see, and so they, they don't yeah, complain they don't ask much. for much. Well, and, and I guess that's that was part of my question, because yeah. typically at the start of the year, they, they go running around and said, hey, can yeah. you do this? And, and we'll get on fairly quick, because yeah. we well, agree with I, that. I understand that, but this just this, she was just seeing that we was doing some work down in there, okay. looking at it, and she just called and asked, and I said, well, I'd bring it up to the commission, and if see what's advisable down there, and see if we can get, get that done. To, okay. Yeah, they said like kind of caught me off guard because typically it's yeah. a year straight from the school. No, it's nothing. No, no complaint. Just want to see if we could move forward and take a look at it, and if we could get some rock yeah. up and get it. Uh, it would I, save that route quite a few yeah. miles. Well, and obviously, you hate to get them stuck too. I do yeah. know Larry got the signs up talking about the flood yeah. area. Good. Um, so that's where we're going. So, okay, Commissioner Becker, do you have a comment? Uh, no, I think I think. I think we need to keep in mind what we're doing with with our hauling and what we're doing because this last month has been a disaster with this rock that we just put out. I mean, I can drive four or five of the roads over here that had rock put on them, what, in the last 45 days? You can't tell there's any rock on them at all. So, I mean, we've got an issue with this rock with the freezing and thawing and the little bit of moisture that gets in it evidently it doesn't take much moisture and it freezes and thaws and it just must explode and that's it. Well, to, to be honest with you, um, we've noticed that too, that the freeze and thaw um, is, a, is a problem basically for any rock, but the other thing is that just that extra moisture. When that moisture gets driven down, it comes back up and that's why you know, those, the, it's, it's just the fines showing that they're, most of them, I'm mean, again, not gonna say all of them, are, are still in good shape. Um, but yeah, we've had issues with that. Um, to be honest with you, the, the hard rock will do the same, not to the extent of what this is. But again, when it comes to 
you know, hauling this, this more expensive rock compared to what we're using, that the biggest thing that help us is to get rid of the moisture or get rid of the the moisture sitting on the road with, with no crown. Right. We've rebuilt the road drainage. <coughs> and I know, I know the really road's that rebuilt. The rock that we hauled three years ago is just now gone. On the gray rock, you mean? So to me, that was that was that was a pretty good deal. The hard rock that we're talking. About. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and and I mean, I would probably agree with you um, in some instances. I mean, that's the whole thing that comes down to. Uh, you know, we tried to find different routes to put it on, traffic-wise and everything else. Um, you know, a lot of the things that we've depended on well at, or lately too is the, the different amount of rains that we've had. I mean, we'll get rains in one area but not in another, and unfortunately it's just a, almost a guess. So. I know, running down Falcon, because I kind of do that on the daily now. It got that put down the week I was gone. And then I came back, ran it, I mean, just loaded up, and then went down the next weekend, and I was just throwing mud on the side of my truck. I mean, not mud, it's the slurry right. that comes yeah. off that rock. Sure. I mean, it just goes to mush. Yeah. It needs it needs to be a a different rock. I mean, it but, just it just. Okay, let's let's address one other issue, Bryce, and I know you put a lot of rock on a lot of roads, and but was. We didn't get to shape a lot of them before we put it on there, did we? Correct. Oh, Randy, speak into your microphone. Uh, I just can't just talking about we didn't get to shape uh, a lot of the roads that we put rock on. And I think if we're going to do something like the size project we did, maybe we need to give two months of, to the greater operators to get out and shape certain roads so that they just last longer. I think it'll, I think it'll pay us back in both ways. Maybe not. I, I agree with you. The problem that we had was is uh, being short of help, pulling the, the right. blade operators out of that to run trucks, uh, where we were passing clear into October. So again, um, yeah. Just, what what do we do for make priority? That's yeah. that's what I've been asking. So uh, I, I wish there was I could keep those blade men and the blade men all year long. And um, we we had a, uh, an applicant uh, that we did a uh, book to hire last week, and we're still waiting on the test back from him. For some strange reason, but anyway, that would give us another section man, um, so that we could help out that situation. But yeah, that's unfortunately that's the deal. Is I would love to go back and before we drop any rock on any roads, go back and do that. And so I think the one thing we can do is buy a higher quality rock. It doesn't take any more labor. It doesn't take. It just takes more money. Money for the rock. That's it. More, but, more but money. If it lasts three years. Does it take more money? It takes more money initially, but does it take more money? Uh, the, the other thing is not only more money, but I would say more time, so, unless we're able to find somebody to bring in 400 tons a day. Now that is an incredibly amount of material to bring in on a truck haul. Um, the problem is we went through what we had out of eight or 10,000 tons that we had, that we had stock haul for us. We went through that fairly quickly and trying to replenish that fast enough is what the problem is. If if we can't get to that kind of backhaul all the time, it makes it very difficult to use that much rock. So they must be working on it. I yeah I don't know. The wind. Yeah, I, We're yeah. slapping the yeah, could be. So anyway, uh, and again I you know I, I told I totally agree and hear what you're saying, you know, about these roads and I just yeah. We got to drive do something different. I mean, it's just the same complaints, it's the same results. <laughs> Not necessarily complete same results. There are some areas that are better, yes. but there's other areas that just keep being the same. The other thing that, that I'm really pushing, and that's why I said before, I think there's a lot of roads that we have a good rock base that we're going to try to go back and put a lot more sand on, because I think the sand helps us immensely. Yeah with the absorption it, it it breaks those those fines up a little bit gives them something else well, to find that slurry something to bond to too yeah yeah so the area of jonas needs sand i mean oh, I, I agree that we need to be we need to be using the harder rock every opportunity that we get knowing that you know we may not be able to keep the kind of supply we need but when we have an opportunity to get some hard rock that's that's where i'm going that's where i'm at yeah. 
No, I, I, I agree. Like I said, that's the plan. Um, like, like working on these roads and trying to bring some rock in there. So, two years ago, in 21, I ordered uh, a load of two-inch clean rock from JL Andrew, mm -hmm. and he brought it, and it was it was a real light and gray rock. Uh, and I don't know, I called and just got one delivered last week uh, for another road at the cemetery, but I got Florence rock and two-inch clean, and it's it's the sandstone and it's. I know what it's going to do. I mean, I've drove over just with the trucks and then traffic out there just in five days now. And I know what it's going to do. Drizzly day with black town. Uh, we're waiting for that drizzly yeah. day. But the grain rock that I got two, two years ago, but I think it was from Florence then. Was that a different vein that they was probably in? Could have been. I mean, it's, 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 that, that two years ago is still there, a two inch that we've used for base in other areas of the cemetery. And I they, well, and, and honestly, Every quarry has has those good veins, bad veins. Uh, I can tell you that Florence, you know, when they have they have uh, three different layers that are tested, um, they know the better la the better layers, and you know we're we're going by their um, by their processes that we're getting the best rock we can for that. Um, but I can also tell you that that rock does vary a little bit in those ledges as well. Um, so it's a when I mean, you're dealing with mother nature and I I got some three inch minus stuff just put down as a base it's phenomenal it works fine it's just I'm not gonna top it with that same stuff right right but but one thing that helps you there is the three inch yeah. that larger particle does oh yeah and then help it, out, then so. it creates a crack and it washes all that slurry down yeah. away from everything so, all right. so anyway, Anything else, John? Mr. Dalkey, did you want a personnel? This was us. Just commission. Oh, okay. Not, not included. Yeah, okay. All right. right. Nothing from Brad or uh, Brad has health issues today. Huh? Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Bryce. Yep. Okay. How long would you like? Um, ten minutes at the most. Okay. Let's do ten. Uh, I move that we recess the executive session in order to discuss personnel performance pursuant to case 75 4319 Item 1 personnel matters, non elected personnel performance with the commission. Which commission, only. commission only. Commission uh, only. For 10 minutes uh, from, and it'll take us a minute or two to get Kent. Would you want to call Kent? Yeah. Um, yeah, who should I call in to? Uh, Jonah's calling you right now. So where was his mic? Yeah. I just muted him. <laughs> 228 to 238. Is there a second? Second. Eight. Second, Commissioner Gehring. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Motion carried 5 0. We will be back at 238. Okay, that's a 10 minute break. Give Tina a break. <laughs> Let me get this camera off real quick. Oops. Hmm. Okay, he doesn't want to hmm. take my password. So, Kent, which microphone? We can find a job for you at dispatch. They wouldn't let me do it now. <laughs> this conference will now be recorded. Okay, we're out of executive session, no decisions made. Okay, I'd like to do an executive session on potential property acquisition. I move that we recess an executive session in order to discuss potential property acquisition pursuant to KSA 75-4319B, item six, preliminary discussion acquisition of real estate with the commission. Uh, does the commission want to present? Probably should. Let's say I'm TM. Let's do 15 minutes, 240 to 255. Second. Second by Commissioner Gehring. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carried 5 0. We'll be back at 255. I got it. for
recording. Will now be recorded. Okay, we are out of executive session. No decision tonight. Anything else? If not, I move to adjourn. Second. Second by Commissioner Gearing. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Is there any public comment out there? I don't see any. Uh, motion carried 5 0. Thanks for putting up with me today, guys. Uh, That's Ken, all right. Ken, would it? Hopefully I'll be back next week. Would, would it?